Hi, micro folks. We're just doing a, a few really quick movies um, dealing with um, virus um, structure and replication. So the first two are on bacteriophage, and now we're going to take a look at some models that um, students made from previous semesters. Um, and these are going to be our animal slash um, human viruses. So. You'll recall from lecture, folks, we said when we're talking about human or animal viruses, there's two types, the naked viruses. And a naked virus, the outermost layer is a protein coat called a capsid. And one important job of the capsid is to protect the, the viral nucleic acid. And remember, the viral nucleic acid is going to be either DNA or RNA. Right? So the protein capsid protects the DNA or RNA so it won't be destroyed. But then, folks, another really important function of the capsid is that it will also bear the protein adhesins. And um, the protein adhesins, you'll recall, are the surface structures the virus uses to attach to the host cell, the cell that it's going to invade. So here in this cool model, you guys, we have, here's our, um, our viral um, adhesins, so these would be viral proteins, and then the little pom-poms at the ends, those are the specific proteins that would bind, bind to complementary um, surface receptors on the surface of the host cell. Um, so with a, excuse me, <coughs> so this is another cool um, model that a student made many years ago, but again, just love how ingenious they are in their their models here, folks. So sorry, you know, that's probably not that great. Okay, so this was um, showing. Uh, here's our bacterium, right? And the outer part here would be the the outermost layer. So we'll pretend this is a. Um, we'll pretend perhaps this is a um, naked virus, and so the the little golf tees here, folks. Those are the adhesins. Here's a host cell. This might be a human cell right here. So what's so cool in this model is the viral adhesins here, right, they're going to bind to, down here's a great example, they're going to bind to these specific host cell surface molecules called the surface receptors, and that's how the virus is going to attach to our cells. Now we're going to see, folks, that if we can make antibodies, specifically neutralizing antibodies, the antibodies can attach to the adhesins. And when the antibodies attach to the adhesins, it, uh, it blocks the ability of the virus to attach to the cell. And if the virus can't attach to the cell, the virus can't infect the cell and the cell won't be harmed. So um, these neutralizing antibodies are really important. Um, there, there are immune strategy to block um, attachment and infection of our cells. Um, we can make our own neutralizing antibodies if we get infected by a virus and survive. Um, we'll, have, we'll be making neutralizing antibodies against adhesins. Or another way we could do it, folks, is that if we could vaccinate ourselves, um, uh, vaccinate ourselves with maybe some component of the adhesin, and then our immune system will make the neutralizing antibodies. So then if we ever do get infected with the virulent um, virus, are, those neutralizing antibodies will bind to the adhesins and then the virus can't attach to our cells and can't infect us. Now this is exactly what we need folks for that novel coronavirus. Um, that's going to be a real important vaccine, um, a vaccine that we um, will we'll inject, inoculate ourselves, um, probably is going to have some components, some, some um, parts of the viral um, adhesins will make antibodies against them so that if we ever get infected with the novel coronavirus, we'll already have those circulating neutralizing antibodies, they'll coat the um, virus, the virus won't be able to attach our cells, and then we won't get infected. So that's that's the goal of our vaccines. Okay, and then folks, we're just going to switch to one last model, and this is another great model. Um, and this is a model of, oops, so you guys, you'll recall that we said this is a naked virus, okay? So if we take our naked virus, okay, and if we wrap it in stolen host cell membrane, this then becomes an envelope virus. And this is so cute, you guys, because the student, they made a little cartoon of an envelope down here. So this is an envelope virus. So in this model, folks, just to explain it, the black would re represents the viral nucleic acid, either DNA or RNA. And here they've used... Um, this this thin sheet to represent the capsid, the protein that would cover the nucleic acid. And then, folks, this outermost layer, 
This is the viral envelope and it's stolen host cell membrane. For example, when the virus is replicating in our cells, when, when they're escaping, they can steal some of our cytoplasmic membrane and that will become the viral envelope. Different viruses can steal different membranes. Some viruses might st steal nuclear membrane or Golgi body membrane. Um, but again, we want to remember the viral envelope is stolen host cell membrane. But unlike the naked virus, where the adhesins are attached to the capsid, in, for an envelope virus, if the adhesins were attached to the capsid inside, right, um, the adhesins wouldn't be able to interact with the host cell surface receptors, so the virus couldn't infect a cell. So what happens, this is so cool you guys, before the virus steals our cell membranes, what does the virus insert into our cell membranes? What are these guys up here? These are the adhesins, right? So before the virus steals our host cell membranes, it inserts its protein adhesins into that membrane. So then when it when it um, is released from our from our cell, you know, and it has that coating of host cell membrane, the membrane, the adhesins are going to be in the envelope right where they should be. And this student just so so I, Irina, she did such a great job. So she knew I was struggling showing um, neutralizing antibodies. So Irina, who made these two models, she came up with a neutralizing antibody. And we'll see you guys, we often use as our generic antibody these Y-shaped molecules. This could be, for example, IgG antibody. So if this virus infected somebody who'd been vaccinated, um, maybe this is the novel coronavirus. Maybe that person had been vaccinated with the coronavirus vaccine. They'd have circulating neutralizing antibodies. The antibodies are going to bind to the adhesins. And with the antibody bound, then the adhesin can't bind to the surface of our cells. The, the adhesins can't bind to the host cell surface receptors. And that's what would keep, that, that's what would prevent us from becoming infected um, and having maybe severe disease. So again, you guys, just kind of the principle of um, neutralizing antibodies and how vaccinations can protect us against viral infection. So I think, oh, one, one last thing, you guys, the envelope is very delicate. So um, if it's shed from the host and it dries up or has exposure to soap or um, alcohol or UV, it's easily damaged. And if the envelope's damaged, the adhesins can't function. So for this reason, when envelope viruses are shed into the environment from their host, they usually don't remain infectious for very long unless they're protected by moist organic material. Um, but again, usually the envelope viruses, they don't remain infectious in the environment for long. Unfortunately, our naked viruses, naked because they lack an envelope, this protein outer coat, the capsid, is really strong and tough. So if we were to shed um, naked viruses into the environment, say polio virus or maybe human papilloma virus, HPV, because they're naked, they do remain infectious in the environment for long periods of time. So naked viruses are not good in that respect. Okay, guys, we'll stop there.